So then topic back on another video. I'm Strange Wing. He is Nate, and today we are doing our top ten favorite movies of 2019. He's gonna tell you how it works. So how we do our top ten list is we will kind of speed through our ten through six pretty quickly. Maybe say a few things about a movie here and there if we feel compelled to do so. And then one of us will do 5-4, five, 5-4, four, five, four, three, two, three, two, and then we'll trade off number ones. And disclaimer, we haven't seen every movie this year. We do not get paid to go see movies. We have to use our hard on cash that I, well, that I got from selling drugs. He, he did it the old American way. So we haven't seen every movie. Plus this list is biased as fuck. Been warned. My number 10 is going to be Late Night. It is a Amazon Prime original. About a late night talk show host and you know, women and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. so it's a good little mixture of political and romantic comedy. And I big fan of both. Number nine, surprisingly, is The Irishman. Huge Mark Scorsese fan. Unlike the rest of those movies, I don't see this one having very much rewatchability. That's fair. And that's why I love about his movies the most. The quotability and rewatchability, but still a phenomenal film. It's on the top ten of the year. Next is number eight, Little Monsters. <laughs> you got the song with the decade. And a couple of genres. Zombie films is a huge one. True. This is one of the most refreshing ones. Now that's what I like to hear. But number seven is John Wick 3. That's going to be a Zemeckis. What is the Zemeckis, Nate? A Zemeckis rule is the rule that we use if one of us, if we have the same movie on our list, but one of us has it two spots or higher, we'll call it Zemeckis. And it just means we're going to wait to talk about it till we get to the person who has it higher on their list. Which in this case doesn't matter since it's in your bottom five, but. Yeah. So number six for me is going to be Crawl. Who knew Adder Goes could be so fun? <laughs> My number 10 is going to be Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, no way I'm not going to put a Star Wars movie on my list. I guess. A lot of things I didn't love about it, but I still absolutely love Star Wars to death. So? Uh, number 9 on my list is Alita Battle Angel. Definitely, to me, a super underrated little sci-fi uh, adventure action flick. Number 8 is going to be Ready or Not. Not a huge horror fan myself, but this one was great. It was a really, really... I had so much fun watching this movie. Yay! Uh, number seven is going to be Marriage Story. And then number six is going to be Avengers Endgame. Alrighty. So my number five is going to be Uncut Gems. Nice. I haven't seen it yet. The Safety Brothers, they do it again. Good time. Gave you this feeling of anxiety and this one does it just as well if not better that there's impressive number four is gonna be guava island oh that's, okay that's not that right guava yeah. yeah okay word every movie should be 60 to 70 minutes this film's an hour long it has heart emotion it has music it's a musical i'm surprised that that's on my list but childish gambino donald glover that boy good number five for me is gonna be knives out uh Really, really enjoyed the movie. I ended up seeing it twice. Why? 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 Because there's, I don't know if it's a twist necessarily, but you learn, I don't know to give you spoilers away from me, but I haven't seen it, plan to see it. You learn something that you thought you were going to learn at the end, like in the first third of the movie. And that really threw me off a little bit. But after watching it again the second time, knowing going in with a different expectation, I love this film a lot. I love the dialogue in this film. It's absolutely phenomenal. I think all the performances are great. The casting is great. And any movie that's original, I am probably going to love. There's not nearly enough of that in Hollywood. That's a fact. Number four, speaking of originality, is going to be Jojo Rabbit. Uh, another film, it wasn't what I was expected going into it, but once I realized what it was and where we were going with it, I fell in love with it. A great coming of age story. A lot of coming of age stories kind of exist in like just slice of life kind of things. But this one takes place in the middle of World War II Germany. So a little heavier, a lot of weight going on. But wait, there's more. My number three is uh, Always Be My Baby, a Netflix original again. Mm -hmm. This film is one of the best rom-coms I've seen in years. Wow. It kind of reminded me of one of my relationships because she was pushing them to do more. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Your full potential. You're just making stupid YouTube videos, not going anywhere in life, and you go do your thing. Well, the difference between that and this is she's nowhere in life. Mm -hmm. And we almost got 1,000 subs. So subscribe now to your YouTube channel so we can get to 1,000 subs and get paid. Thank you. But, yeah, so that really connected and, like, got me super invested in the film. Mm -hmm. But the characters are amazing. Nice. Everything's smart. It's planned out. 
is how it would really be in a relationship, and it's funny. Mm. And it has a phenomenal cameo in it. If you haven't seen it, it won't ruin it. Thank you. But my number two is... <laughs> you can't decide what your one and two are? My number two was my number one. Okay. Is A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Okay, I still haven't seen it yet. Dude, you need to. I want to, very badly. I cried start to finish. Mm-hmm. I understand why I love this movie and the impact it had on me as a person is isn't I'm not saying Mr. Rogers isn't special, but in the documentary I cried a bunch of times as well. Mm-hmm. And humanity, mm-hmm. I mean kind to others, is what makes him stand out. Mm-hmm. So even though Tom Hanks is Tom Hanks, you still this man's so nice. Hmm. You fall in love with his humanity, and you don't think of that as Mr. Rogers. You don't think that's Tom Hanks. You don't see that person. You just see humanity at its finest. Hmm. And it's just, it's the most heartfelt movie of the year. Cries start to finish it, like I said before. I cannot stress that enough. I was fucking, hmm. I was bawling like I was Kobe dog. It was insane. Nice. But yeah, how easy I fell into the movie, even though I did think. Oh, it's Tom Hanks. I can't get past Tom Hanks because that one photo we saw. But, yeah, you got nothing to worry about. You're in good hands. Yeah. Well, maybe you should try to be a little more like him. No. Uh, my number three is going to be uh, this year's film from my favorite director, which would be Mr. Tarantino. It's going to be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. What number? Three. Really? We went and saw this film together. Uh, the first time I watched it, it definitely wasn't my favorite Tarantino film, and there were lots of things that I could poke at it with but the more I sat and thought about it and I thought about the plot and the characters specifically specifically Brad Pitt's character is amazing yeah and the more I think about that the more I'm like I like that movie a lot more than I thought I did at right after I got out of the theater because sometimes films just kind of have to sit with you so. that's a fact number two for me is going to be maybe the biggest Zemeckis we've ever had in terms of things jumped and it's going to be John Wick 3 Jeez. It's just a, like, to be clear, this is our favorite movies of the year. We're not claiming that these are the best. Maybe we should have stayed that at the beginning of the video. We because did. Many, did you? This list is biased as fuck. This is biased as fuck. This is just one of, it's a Nate movie to me. I mean, like, I love the tone. I I've, I've fell in love with, the, with John Wick from the first movie from the beginning. We've talked about this probably on film, but definitely with each other before. The first one, you just get a great introduction to this character. And you get to learn more about him, invest in him. And then the second one, they spent a lot of time trying to build a world around him. It didn't feel as much about John Wick as it felt about trying to establish, like, how the world works that he exists in. And then three was just the perfect combination of the two of those. You get more of his character and more of what he's been through, more of where he's trying to go, more of who he is as a person. You get some great side characters. I am not normally a fan of Halle Berry, but I, I loved her in this film. I think she did phenomenal in this film. The, ac- the action choreography was phenomenal. That's why I saw my list. Mm-hmm. Like what you said in the beginning, I thought this was the best out of the three. Hmm. But the action. Yeah. 10 sure. out of 10. And, and you've pointed this out when we talked about it before, but what I really love about this one is that we get so much more than just the gunfights this time. I mean, you get a gunfight. You get, you this, get everything. You get this dude making people, making a horse kick people. You have knives, axes being thrown around. Great sword fight scene. And, like, all the characters around American him. literature. That's true. Yeah. All the characters around him are, we don't know if it was American literature or not, but some literature. Shit, probably. Literature. Also, they gave a shout out to Frank and Sylvester Stallone walking into the thing. They was like, they were singing the Rocky song from yeah. the beginning. And mm-hmm. I was like, ah. Yeah. Sold me already. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I really love everything about this movie. I've rewatched it two or three times since it came out. And Same. I just love it more and more every time. What else? My number one is going to be Queen and Slum. Hmm. You have the political element about the cops, which is important, Mm -hmm. but you get a romance, you get laughter, you get love, hate with the political side of it, you get comedy, everything you have, everything a movie can make you feel, they put in this movie. And then they put fear in there, the most important, the hardest to pull off, I think, and they put that in there, and it's just like... You hate, like, the situation these characters are in because you, the film goes, you learn to love them and the people along the way that you meet. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's very impactful. It's thought-provoking. It's, 
d it does the cop thing in a way where along the way you meet people and puts you in situations and you see both sides of like oh well he's a cop he should do what he says or fuck the police and you just get such a thought provoking film mm -hmm. with all the emotions packed into it it's like a it's like a it's like a, a woman you know yeah the sex and everything inside her is amazing I mean the, the the work of art that is her body is amazing okay. but inside that that's what keeps you there that's yeah. what has you coming back you know gotcha. that's why you put a ring on it yeah. and if Queen of Sun was a woman it would be a very thick woman and I would definitely put a ring on it because it's my number one of the year because she would also have a great personality yeah nice um <laughs> nice my number one uh I don't understand why more people don't love this movie, and that's just because it hit me specifically emotionally hard, and I guess I just, yeah, that's how film works. Some things hit certain people hard, some things hit other people in different ways, but my number one favorite film that I saw this year was Peanut Butter Falcon. <clears throat> I fell in love with that movie, absolutely, and he's laughing because he's thinking about the wrestling scene. Makes sense. I love adventure film and that's definitely what this is at its heart and it like it has an old school feel because it's an adventure film without being set in this crazy world that doesn't really like this takes place in our world on our east coast and well, there's no like weird cgi or crazy aliens or characters or mysticism about it all it's literally just real people and they managed to kind of retell this tom sawyer style adventure with a character who has a disability and someone who's just, you know, an outcast, a bum, like a lot for his, you know, his own actions put him there and things like that. But we learn that he's gone through a lot of hurt in his life through certain things. And it's just like, it's dirty. Like, I love well, it. It's like Lil Wayne said, self so dirty you can't bathe it. It's true. So, and I love just kind of this like weird, like unexpected romance that kind of happens between the uh, the two or Shia LaBeouf's character and the girl from Fifty Shades of Grey, Dakota, whatever her name is, Johnson? Ha! Any movie that makes me cry, I'm probably going to fall in love with it. And by the end of this movie, I it was just one of those perfect moments where you go to an early movie and you end up being the only person in the theater. And I love when that happens. And by the end of it, I mean, I'm just like sobbing alone in a dark theater. You're alone! Tell us films that you love from this year down in the comment section below. Do you agree with our list? Do you, are you in the comment section? Where is the Joker at? Let us know that, that down in the comment section below. Like, share, and